Now, I actually mentioned this a while ago before we had the November elections. And they elected, I hate to even use the term elected, Hoku, because see, one thing you got to understand about New York State, New York State, the majority of this state is actually right-wing conservative. That's the majority of this state. The problem with New York State, however, is that the majority of the population is located inside New York City. And New York City alone controls elections, and the Democrats basically have their teeth sank into New York City. So the issue ultimately is, is while Long Island and all the rest of New York is mostly red, if you take a look at our electoral map, New York City, thanks to the fact that they keep allowing illegal aliens in and they continue to uh, grow their numbers basically inside the city, they basically drown out the voices of the rest of the state. So to some extent, we're kind of like California where the cities basically are overpopulated and they control the rest of the state. Now, Governor, uh, what was that guy's name? Governor Cuomo. He was basically forced out because of poor decisions and poor governing that he did during the COVID pandemic. And they basically stuck it to him. And then they followed up on that with a sexual uh, harassment allegation. They pretty much got him out of office. So Hochul ended up taking over because she was lieutenant governor. And then because she ran against a Republican who had no chance of beating her thanks to New York, um, you know, New York City, thanks to New York City, she basically just walked into fucking office. It, if, if we had a situation where you actually had a real challenger who had a chance of winning, she would not be there right now. It's kind of like when I think about Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. Everybody assumed Trump was going to lose because nobody took him seriously on the left. And the right backed him because they really didn't have much of a choice. But after a while, they were able to say, you know what, we're going to back this guy no matter what. Hillary ended up losing because across the nation, the vast majority of people didn't want her. Believe me, nobody here wanted Hochul. I don't even think the people who voted for her wanted her, but they just didn't have a choice except for the Republican guy, Zeldin. So they just said, uh, they're like, oh, well, it looks like I got to vote. I got to go out and vote for Hochul, basically. And then when you add in like mail-in votes and, and all those ballots and other issues and everything, she, she, she was basically just going to walk right into office. There was nothing you could do about her. Bottom line is, one of the things that annoyed me most about her in the very beginning was the fact that she came up with this stupid idea, which obviously is not her idea. It's obviously the green agenda on the left and in government that they were going to not have gas lines in future buildings. One day ago, two days ago, they're bringing up, once again, this story that was actually proposed a long time ago, because I've been talking about this for over a year. So, let's see, it's like, who do you even want to get your news from? Bloomberg, Fox, Daily Mail... Okay, I'll read Daily Mail because I have, like, you know, no respect for Bloomberg or Fox. I really don't care what they have to say because it's all bullshit. But anyway, now New York Governor Kathy Hochul plans to ban gas stoves in new homes and commercial buildings by the end of the decade to the fury of residents. Now, this was Hochul's plan. It says Hochul 64 claim the stoves contribute to a third of greenhouse gas input. Now, mind you, somewhere else in the news, they're saying that the reason why they want to ban the gas stoves is because of asthma in children. Now, so keep this in mind. They can't even keep this story straight. Okay, current gas stove tops in buildings and restaurants will not be impacted. Newly constructed buildings would transition to electric stoves by 2030. So if 2030 sounds familiar, that's also the time they said that in the state, businesses will not be allowed to sell gasoline-powered cars. By 2040, they won't be allowed to sell gasoline-powered trucks. New York State may see a ban on gas stoves in new buildings and homes by the end of the decade as officials seek to combat climate change. Governor Kathy Hochul suggested the move during her State of the State address on Tuesday while outlining her plan toward achieving the New York dream. This ain't the New York dream, lady. 
The potential ban has been a contentious conversation in the U.S. since federal officials called the household appliance a hidden hazard, with new research linking gas stoves to childhood asthma. You know what else I'd link to childhood asthma? How about all those snack cakes by Little Debbie and all that shit that they're selling these fucking kids that are giving them diabetes and making them like fucking 40 pounds and 50 pounds overweight by the time they're fucking dead. And they're buying this shit for 25 cents, 50 cents a dollar. They're buying this shit. I, you know, see, I always had an idea for that. Because, see, if you come into a New York store, if you go into, I want you to just come into New York City. Take a look at any store, corner store, right across the street from a New York City public school. They're selling two things. Number one, they're selling pure sugar and all of this shit. And then on top of that, they're selling fucking drugs. Marijuana, uh, uh, vape cartridge, all this stuff. That's coming from China, which, by the way, that's where the fentanyl is coming from, by the way. And uh, they're selling all this unhealthy shit. And these kids, their minds are destroyed by this stuff and their bodies are following. So they're worried about asthma from gasoline-powered stoves and, and uh, uh, propane and this, that, and other. They're worried about butane, propane. They're worried about the gas-powered stoves. They're not worried about all this uh, little Debbie and fucking um, uh, yodels and all that shit that's like uh, 50 cents a dollar. These kids, I, I swear to God, these kids are going into these stores. They're drinking Red Bull because there's no ban on Red Bull for children. So they, they get Red Bull in the morning. They're drinking um, uh, Arizona. Those things are like a dollar. You get like 70 grams of sugar, maybe 80, depending upon what brand you get or what flavor you get. And, you know, my idea was it's like, hey, what you really should do is you should charge a penny per calorie. Because if you charge a penny per calorie, that would make something like a banana a dollar or 50 cents or 25 cents or something like that because it's all natural. But it would make all this fucking junk food like three and four dollars prices that it should be. But see, our problem is we subsidize junk food. We we these they're worried about asthma and kids from fucking stoves. These I want you to just do me a favor. If you're anywhere near New York City, go inside one of the public schools and take a look at these kids. These kids are so fat. In fact, the whole, what, the movie Super Size Me, the documentary, the military is talking about these kids are fat and undisciplined and their bones are soft. And the military is complaining that they are undisciplined kids that are fat and their bones are weak and they can't even carry the amount of weight that older people would have been able to carry when they were their age. And they're worried about gas stoves. Yeah, so anyway, buildings are the largest source of emissions in our, stat, in our state. Yeah, the reason why is because people live in the fucking buildings. People create waste. Our population has inched past 8 billion, supposedly. People create waste. Like, yeah, the buildings are where people live. Why wouldn't the buildings be? Never mind. Accounting for a third of our greenhouse gas output, Hochul said. It passed New Yorkers. Oh, if passed, New Yorkers may see only electric stovetops and new developments by 2030. Current buildings would not be impacted, so residents would not be forced to swap out their stovetops. Um, chefs in the Big Apple worry that the ban on gas stoves and new developments, including restaurants, will hinder the quality of food. Food guru Stratus Morphogen, the managing director of Brooklyn Chop House, said the ban is a bad Yelp review waiting to happen. Well... For these people who are like, yeah, I have to have my steak char broiled and shit, and all. like it has to be broiled in the oven. It's like, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna shit all over you when they get that electric oven steak like delivered to them. So that that's just what it is. Um, electric can work for fast casual. However, with fine dining, it's impossible to function with an electric kitchen. Morphigan told the New York Post, "Imagine a guest ordering a two or three pound whole fish. It usually takes forty to fifty minutes to cook." Now it will take two hours. Jesus. Why? That's weird. I didn't know an electric... Uh... Okay, so anyway. He claimed the electric stoves will tank and bring the growth to a halt and destroy our industry. Entrepreneur James Malios with Savetta Hospitality added that he has cooked with an electric stove before and the quality of food is noticeably different. I have never looked at electric because it has never been able to do the same job, Malios told the news outlet. 
The governor also plans to take her green agenda a step further by barring water heaters and oil furnaces in new developments. And if Hochul's agenda progresses, New Yorkers may see a ban on fossil fuels by 2025 for new smaller buildings and in 2028 for new larger buildings. New Yorkers and chefs moving into new developments might see electric stoves only by 2030. Okay. Nearly 13% of asthma cases in children on average can be blamed on the toxins produced by gas ranges. Now, where did they get that from? Now, here's my question. Here's my question. The air in your house is open to move in and out of your house to the outside. How could you single-handedly say that it's gas stoves while ruling out the rest of the atmosphere where we have gasoline-powered cars producing emissions as well? What allows you to simply say, yeah, it's the gas stoves in the house that's causing all this asthma, but allows you to ignore the fact that every time they step outside, they're surrounded by gasoline-powered cars? So if you want to blame fossil fuels in general, how do you know it's the stoves? In fact, I'll say it like this. The gas water boilers and the gas furnaces, which are not necessarily the stoves, you could just as easily say it's those things rather than say it's the stoves. But they're talking specifically about gas ranges, despite the fact that in most of these houses that still have uh, oil heat or still have gas water boilers, that those things produce the same type of emissions in that house. Even though I know the venting may be a little bit different because, you know, they vent that stuff out of the basement through like a single pipe. And it goes like straight from the top of the uh, water boiler right out like of the house. The thing about it is how could they be 100% sure? And why now? That's the, that's the key question you got to ask yourself. Why now? Anyway. Meanwhile, as the contentious debate over gas stoves heats up, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre insisted on Wednesday that President Joe Biden was not coming after Americans' gas stoves. Yeah, um, they just said that they are coming after your gas stoves. They literally said it. Anyway, the president does not support banning gas stoves, and the Consumer Product Safety Commission, which is independent, is not banning gas stoves. Yeah, not yet. You'll see. John Pierre's comment was in response to Biden-appointed Consumer Product Safety Commissioner Richard Trumka Jr., who called the stoves a hazard to children following the release of a study conducted by the commission. The new study on children's health... You know what? I'll tell you what. You know what a hazard on children's health is? It's fucking TikTok. You know what a hazard on children's health is? Giving them cell phones before they're able to earn enough money to buy their own cell phone. And then letting them sit on TikTok all goddamn day. You know what's a hazard to kids' health? Handing them an iPad and letting them simply sit and watch it like a zombie while you go about doing your thing because you're too goddamn lazy to parent. That, I believe, is a hazard to children's health. Anyway, asthma affects roughly 6 million U.S. children each year, and nearly 13% of them get it for breathing in the myriad toxins that a gas stove belches out every day. Yeah, because the kids are in the house all day long enough to be around the gas stove. Uh, chances are these kids are around those gas stoves for very small, poor, you know, very small, very, very small periods of the day, breakfast and most likely dinner. The rest of the day they're at school. Doesn't make any sense. About a hundred cities and counties have, and by the way, if that was true, then why not just create better venting for the gas stoves in order to vent it right outside the house? You know, that's what they do with the water boiler. That's what they do with the furnace. They, now, I, I want you to understand, inside your house, the three major things that are running gas, would one of them is obviously your furnace, if you're running gas as a furnace, or you're running oil heat. The second thing is your dryer, and then the next thing is the uh, stove. The dryer that I've had that had gas has a vent that leads outside. The water boiler has a vent that leads outside. So, if you're so um, certain that it's a gas range, then why not just have fume hoods that lead outside? Right? But whatever. Uh, 
Yeah, it's just some more nonsense. Natural gas distributors and appliance makers argue that a ban on natural gas stoves would drive up costs for homeowners and restaurants with little environmental gain. The Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers, a trade group representing appliance makers, noted that gas stoves are usually cheaper to operate than electric, arguing that increased use of ventilation is a better solution than a van. Holy shit! Isn't that what I just said? You know, see, using my brain, I, I, I just specifically said... Now, keep in mind, I'm reading this shit for the first time. Didn't I say exactly that? Didn't I say, wait a minute, we have other things in the house that are creating these gases. Why not just use better ventilation in order to vent the gases outside? No, no, no. We got to get rid of it because Hochul said so. Okay. A ban on gas cooking appliances would remove an affordable and preferred technology used in more than 40% of homes around the country. Aham spokeswoman Jill Notini told Daily Mail. A ban would fail to address the overall concern of indoor air quality while cooking because all forms of cooking, regardless of heat source, all forms of cooking, regardless of heat source, generate air pollutants, especially at high temperatures. Notini added that a focus on increased use of ventilation is an effective solution to improve indoor air quality while cooking. The American Gas Association added that regulatory agencies have presented no documented evidence linking... Oh, well, okay, you know, some people will say that's because of the lobbyists, but they'll say the American Gas Association added that regulatory agencies have presented no documented evidence linking breathing problems to gas stove. I'm going to say it again. Show me these children. I want to see how much do these children weigh. You're talking about asthma. But I want to see how much these kids weigh. Did you ever consider the fact that maybe when these kids are eating all this goddamn sugar and they weigh 10 and 20 and 30 pounds over what they should weigh at their size, that most of their breathing problems might be coming from that? I want to see how much these kids weigh. Let me tell you something. Around here in New York City, some of these kids and the teenagers, I've seen kids, man, they got worse looking bodies than 40-year-olds. Worst. Like, I've seen 50-year-olds in better shape. Anyway, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission and EPA do not present gas ranges as a significant contributor to adverse air quality or health hazard in their technical or public information literature, guidance, or requirements, Karen Harbert said. The most practical, realistic way to achieve a sustainable future where energy is clean as well as safe, reliable, and affordable is to ensure it includes natural gas and the infrastructure that transports. Oh, look at this lady's neck. I'm not kissing her on the neck. I usually kiss ladies on the neck, but this lady got skin tags. Holy shit. Look at this lady right here. Insane scenes as woman brawls with police. It looked like she got her ass kicked. Uh-oh. In Melbourne. Damn. It's, whoa, Jesus. Wow. Okay, so that was the story right there. Now, I'm going to say it just like this. I, as you know, I made a video. I bought a Samsung electric range. All of the appliances in my house are electric. Soon, I will trade my Jeep SRT 6.4 liter V8. Um, it's got like 82,000 miles on it. And, uh, you know, it's nearing the end of a warranty and everything. I will be trading that for my Cadillac Electric Lyric all-wheel drive which I plan to buy with cash I have saved up. Now, there are some people who criticize it. They're like, oh, yeah, well, why are you going electric? Electric guys suck. Well, first of all, I want a new car. Um, I love, I have to say, it's really fucked up. I love my Jeep. I really do. I have problems with it, though, because, you know, as you know, it spent a month and a half in service uh, for a bunch of parts that it needed. And the issue ultimately is uh, Stellantis' uh, quality of service. It's, it's not what it used to be. It used to be better before COVID, and I'm not happy with how it is now. Now, since this is an old vehicle, I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to trade it in and get a new vehicle. Um, that's just how I feel about it. I do love the way the truck looks on the outside, on the inside, I'm disappointed with a lot of the interior materials. They wear badly because I think they were poorly thought out 
when they were installed. And then on top of that, um, warranty service doesn't cover those parts that I'm thinking about. And you know, I I shouldn't have to drive around in a in a in a in a car where parts of it are falling apart, and the warranty service isn't covering them because they they feel oh yeah well we'll replace a single part once or twice but we're not going to replace it anymore. I have a problem with that, especially if it's a part that you designed and you gave the shit to me, and I'm not happy with the fact that the fucking plastic glue that you put on it keeps peeling off. I have a problem with that. So I have choices. I could go to BMW right now and I could get one of their BMW iXs because they, they always seem to have a lease special or a sale on them. I could go to Mercedes right now and I could get one of those EQS SUVs. But I, I really don't want those because those cars really, I, I just really don't want those. I could do them. I could drive them as daily drivers. I just don't really want those. I could go to... um. What is it? Who else sells something I wanted? I could go to Ford and I could trade my Jeep SRT in towards a Ford F-150 Lightning. I don't like the way the F-150 Lightning works. Looks. If Chevy had the, uh, what is that called? The uh, Silverado EV right now and they had it and, it the, and they didn't try to fuck me for like over sticker or something, I could buy that and I would like it. I would probably like it more than the Cadillac except, you know, it's a big ass truck, but... You know, I could do. I could deal with the Chevy EV, the Silverado EV. The problem is that car is not coming out for another year or two or something. I God knows when you go see those trucks. But um, when it comes to appliances, all my appliances are electric appliances. Now, as far as electric goes, um, when it comes to boiling water on top of the range. I have to say that boiling water on top of the range is much, much faster than it is with a gas stove. Elect the kind of electric that I have is not the induction coil. It's the uh, heat transfer. So I've showed you my stove. I made a video. It's the Samsung electric range. And it's um, all it does is it has a big glass countertop. And the energy goes directly from the... Um, it goes directly from the element directly to the pot. It's extremely efficient. It boils water very rapidly. But there are issues. For example, when you turn off the pot, that counter is still very hot. So it's funny because when you turn off the pot, the water in the pot behaves as if the energy was actually increased which is kind of weird because you know that once you turn it off, the temperature should start going down. But once you get that water up to a boil, that energy is still, even if you turn it off, the energy is still coming, strangely enough. So what ends up happening is like you have to take that pot off of there if you want to stop cooking what you're cooking at that point. You have to take the pot off entirely. Now with a gas stove, if you turn the gas off, there is no more heat. The iron of the uh, panel will slowly cool down and that's it it's like the second you turn the gas off there's no more heat but that could the, my stove when you turn that shit off heat is still being transferred even if the heating elements off if that makes sense i believe with an induction stove as soon as you turn it off it automatically is completely off because see the induction stove uses the pot itself to cook the food because the pot itself has induction coils built into the pot or the pan. Problem is you have to use like special pans and pots for an induction stove from what I know. Um, other than that, I don't have many problems with my stove. I actually really like my stove. I like the way my stove looks. The only other downside I'll say is that because the glass surface is completely flat, that means... That the pots, when they sit on the surface, those pots literally can spin around. And, um, like, you know, it's complete. I mean, that's not really a big problem because I, I never had a problem with it. My girlfriend never had a problem with it. So it's not really a big problem. But it's just something I've noticed. Um, all of my Samsung appliances, I must be the luckiest man in the world because everybody else, they bought Samsung washing machines. Them shits were fucking spinning themselves into exploding. Um, some people are complaining their dryers stop working, stop heating their clothes. I've had my equipment since 2018. So far, I've had no problems with it. 
my refrigerator. I was warned. They were like, oh, yeah, these things are too loud. The compressor too. My refrigerator, I haven't heard a peep out of it. It's been very, very quiet. Very, very quiet. I can't say anything negative about it. And you know me. If I had a problem with it, I'd just say it. Um, as for my stove, which is the, you know, the topic, um, I, I bake, I, 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 when, when we have, uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving, I make cheesecakes. I have never had a problem making a cheese and I've had, you gotta remember, I've had the stove since, uh, for a while now, uh, since at least what last year during the spring, um, that stove bakes my, uh, cheesecakes perfectly, bakes cakes perfectly. I've made uh, chicken in the stove, like, uh, what is it, hot wings. Never burned anything. Um, I can't say anything has been dry or excessively dry. In fact, I'll say it like this. Electric doesn't burn things where the gas stove could burn things if I leave it in a little too long. Now, some people like to brown their things. Sometimes I like browning certain things. Sometimes I don't want to. And, and I'll just prefer to just be thoroughly cooked and not browned. Um, for these people who want that char taste and they want that char broil and they want that browning at the top and they want that little bit of burning at the top, for those people, listen, electric ain't going to do that. Electric just won't do that. So there's nothing I can say that's going to change your mind because I know there's some people, like if they make a steak, they want to take that steak and put it on some charcoal. They don't want to cook it in an oven and this, that, and other. Listen, you, I, there's nothing I can say to you because you just prefer the way that tastes. I'm the type of person, I honestly, I don't really care about the, uh, the charbroil um, and the smell and all that. I don't bake. Um, like some people cook everything on charcoal. I don't do that. Um, some people cook everything on the grill. I don't do that. And I, I do like grilled food every now and then. My problem is, to me, it tastes a little bit too dry. And um, I just like the way I cook more. So there's nothing I can say to you. It's like, if you like it that way, that's one thing. And this is what these restaurant owners are saying. They're like, yo, listen, um, electric does not in any way cook the way I need to cook in order to make this restaurant um, stay afloat. In time, when they when these liberal greeners and their agenda, when they push this shit through, in time, most of these younger people, they'll they won't even know what it tastes like to be able to get like uh this uh, fossil fuel cooked food. They won't even know because you know these people are forcing all of this stuff out. So they'll, they won't be able to complain because they'll never have had a charcoal cooked steak or they'll never have had a charbroiled steak. They'll always have electric steak that's been cooked in an electric oven. So eventually they won't even know what they are missing or they won't know if they've missed anything at all. But that's just where it is. Now, even my mom, my mom got that whole GE black slate fucking uh, Home Depot. I showed you, I made a video about it. She got the whole suite, the refrigerator's black slate, the dishwasher black slate, the the oven, the range, the microwave. She got the whole suite, right? All of her stuff works on gas or her oven works on gas. Even her dryer in her house works on gas. Her, uh, what is it called? Her water boiler works on gas. So somebody like her, she's in no, absolutely no rush to get rid of anything she's gonna keep her thing the way it is she's always had gas she's always cooked on gas and that and that's just it so you know some people are not gonna give it up and some people eventually you're gonna have like no choice because these people are pushing you forward to their agenda and there's like nothing you can do about it See, I, I, I kind of feel like it's my job to warn you about shit and to be like a teacher. You know, I tried warning you all about cryptocurrency, but you idiots didn't listen to me. And now you lost all your goddamn money to scam, bankrupt, fraud, Kevin O'Leary and Alex Mashinsky and everything. I try, I did my best. You know, I tried, but y'all just didn't listen. So here's the uh, story that I'm about to refer to. Denver Area Power Company takes over thermostats of thousands of com uh, customers. Uh, so not cool. 
Energy company locks Colorado residents out of their smart thermostat. See, y'all, y'all, I tried to warn y'all not to buy that shit. Alexa, fuck, you people are buying shit and you're snitching on yourself. Like, you're putting all these fucking speakers and shit. You're putting ring cameras in your daughter's bedroom and you got weirdos talking to her through the ring camera. And you got the camera on your front doorstep catching your ass committing crimes and you put the shit on there. It's like you people just don't think. But anyway, about 22,000 Colorado customers lost access to their smart thermostats as temperatures reportedly rose to 90 degrees on Tuesday. Now, let me just say this. First of all, I have an old dumb thermostat, right? So if I want to raise the temperature or lower the temperature in my house, I have to go over to it and I have to do it. Now, the downside about that thing is that unless you set a program, like unless you absolutely tell what time you want the heat to turn up or what time you want the heat to turn down, the problem is you have to do it manually. Now, that's not necessarily a problem because what it means is that if I'm in my uh, bedroom I have to manually turn it up if I think, oh, you know what? It feels a little cold in here, so I have to go and turn it up. The problem, however, is if you got a woman living with you, chances are she's going to keep that shit turned way up, and it's always going to be hot. And me personally, I'm comfortable around 63, 64, 65. I'm comfortable in that range. But here you're dealing with one of these damn women, and they're like, oh, no, it's too cold. I need it up to 70, 74, 75. I'm like, God damn it. It's like, do you understand how much I have to pay this freaking oil company? It's like, you're not even worried about that shit, are you? But, um, you know, it's listen, if she says she's cold, it's like, you know, you know, if you're forcing her to, you know, you know, not wear too much around the house because you like her not wearing too much around the house, then, I mean, you got to turn the heat up, right? You got to turn the heat up. So, anyway, uh, about 22,000 Colorado customers lost access to their smart thermostats. An energy company in Colorado shut down access to 22,000 customers' smart thermostats on Tuesday, citing an energy emergency as temperatures reportedly reached 90 degrees. Wait a minute, What? Temperatures reached 90, so they shut down access to the thermostats. Why the fuck would they do that? Because why would you be turning up the heat? That doesn't even... All right. So it says, Excel's thermostat lockout involved customers who participate in a voluntary program that offers money in exchange for giving up control on the thermostat to save energy. Fuck that. Excel gives these customers $100 for signing up to the program, $25 a year. Now, first of all, let me tell you something. You know how long, and I'm not even going to brag. I'm not going to brag about it. Do you know how long it takes me to make $100? Do you know how long it takes me? It, makes, it takes me about an hour to make $100. I'm not even going to brag. Now, and I just want you to understand something about the dynamics on my side. I work 180 days out of the year. And still make a six-figure salary. Um, uh, a hundred. You, you want you want me to give up my thermostat for a hundred fucking dollars? Really? Fuck that. This week's shutdown was the only time in the program's six-year history that customers couldn't override their smart thermostats. Well, the mere fact that they tried to override their smart thermostats means that they must have had a problem. All right. So anyway, let's remember that this is something that customers choose to be a part of based on the incentives, said Emmett Romine, Excel Vice President of Customer Solutions and Innovations. So it helps everybody for people to participate in these programs. It is a bit uncomfortable for a short period of time, but it's very, very helpful. The energy emergency was based on high temperatures and air conditioner usage that created an outage in Pueblo, Colorado. Participating customers told KMGH-TV that they didn't see an emergency reason for the shutdown. Even if it's a once in a blue moon situation, it just doesn't sit right with us to not be able to control our own thermostat in our house, said Tony Talarchio. Okay, I think that's the end of the story. I, a lot of the stuff that I have is old school, like... My air conditioner, I don't have a thermostat hooked up to the house that controls my air conditioner. The only thing my thermostat controls is home heating oil. 
My air conditioner is the old school regular air conditioner that you, you have to set that shit up in the window and that's it. Like I don't have central air. And if I had central air, it would be connected to one of these new smart thermostats or, or a thermostat of this type. I, I don't have central air. And even though I could have central air installed because I right now I have access to the top floor of the house in a way where I was thinking about getting it dormered because it's funny, like these people keep asking, do you want solar power? But the thing about it is if I change the roof any, like if I did dormering, like all that solar shit would have to get, you know, taken off and everything. But the bottom line is I could install central air. Reality is I just don't want it, even though I could install it, but I'm not going to. Now, I do like some of those Korean models, like the Korean models where it's basically a big plate in your ceiling and uh, you can control with a remote control. When you turn it on, it's just a couple of vents that blow in four directions and everything. I kind of like that because I saw that in South Korea and I used it in a hotel room. I like that. But uh, those old school central airs, like where you have a big compressor on the side of the house and it's pumping the air in and it's... Uh, like the vents, I'm not too crazy about that because, you know, you could get squirrels and animals and shit get into your house like that. Even though there's other ways for them to get in. It's just that's one of the things that kind of turns me off about it. But that's the story right there. You're dealing with these people who are literally... Now, granted, this was a volunteer program. It wasn't necessarily the government. It was a volunteer program. But it makes me think. It's like, yo, listen, once these everybody goes electric... They're going to be able to control all of the electricity very easily. Now, here, it was, now this is, to me, it's kind of like a test. It's like they tested how easy it would be for them to, uh, you know, shut your goddamn heat off or to shut your AC off. But this was, for me, this was just like a test run. But the government, man, the city could do it even easier, you know? So who's to, what's to stop them? And then they'll just apologize for it later, and you and you just have to let bygones be bygones. It's like, what's to stop them from doing stuff like this? You know, what's to stop them? If uh, first of all, like some people think they're safe with gas cars. Here's the problem, though. When just like we experienced with Sandy, what happens if there is no gas? What happens if they can't pump gas or pump oil because the pumps are down? That was the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. But that's not the first time that I've lived through a gas shortage. It's not the first time. I've seen that too. So, you know, it's like one way or another, you're screwed. You know, that's the bottom line. It's like you could choose not to go quietly into the good night, but the reality is the way they've got shit set up, it's like one way or another. It's like if they want to deny you something, it's like they'll deny you something. And if they want to come right to you and take it from you, everybody's like, oh, yeah, out of my cold, dead hands, you're not going to take it. Yo, but when they send that fucking SWAT team to your house and those motherfuckers across the street with snipers and shit and they tell you, yeah, uh, come to the door and bring us this, that, and the other or whatever it is and keep your hands in the air, trust me, you'll do it because the last thing you want is to get blown away and never get to litigate it in court. And it's really messed up. It's like everything they're doing is by force and shit. And, they, and then what's worse than force is the coercion. Because they make it so these companies won't even make the products that you want. Eventually, you'll be stuck with nothing you want. And you'll only be stuck with what they're willing to let you have. So, I felt like um, making a video talking about the fact that they're trying to basically take our stoves from us. I guess it's easier to take our stoves from us than it is to take our guns from us, considering our guns are actually written into the damn Constitution. And uh, basically on my way here out of the city, leaving um, Manhattan, headed back into the city. As you can see, you got nothing but freaking traffic waiting for you every freaking goddamn day. It's fucking traffic every single freaking day. So as you can see down there, they got traffic all around me. They got the traffic. The traffic's everywhere. Going into the city, there's no traffic. Leaving the city, everybody's trying to escape this motherfucker before it gets dark or before it starts to rain because as you can see we have a overclass and everything this is new york city just in case you didn't know just, you might be new here i don't know so um i was gonna talk about this whole oven situation but see it's bigger than just this oven situation i had this conversation with um a building owner 
who I work with. And uh, I was talking to him about it because like he has a building. The city came into his building because they were having trouble with, look at this lady. This lady is writing shit on her uh, like paper tablet or whatever that shit is. And she's writing stuff while she's driving. See, this is why you need a self-driving car. Like you need a Tesla that could drive itself or something. Or you need this adaptive cruise control where you hit resume. You see that shit goes 70 miles an hour. As long as you keep the wheel straight, the car basically just drives itself. There's no way in hell. Like, see, all I got to do is steer. This lady's writing shit. Like, this lady's studying math and motherfucking physics and shit. You, when you hit somebody's bumper. Ah, Jesus Christ. So, anyway. Um, what was I saying? He was telling me about how um, they came into his building. They changed his light bulbs from um, regular lights to LED lights. Because LED lights save a lot of um, energy. LED lights use very little energy. They save a lot of energy, right? So, um... This is the tra this is where we're going. I you know it's funny again. Um right now if you were to look at my situation, my first house has gas heat and I rented that one out and uh get tenants in there and everything. That one had gas heat so they get you get the uh gas by the pipeline delivery. So you don't have to really worry about anybody bringing you uh energy cuz it's just coming by a pipe. Um you know, the cost of living there is relatively low because I got that house years ago and uh, it was a lot cheaper before we hit uh, COVID. And when we hit COVID, all of a sudden, all the values, even of these these houses right here, places where most people would never really want to live, especially right next to the highway. See these little ass houses right there? Those houses look terrible. But those houses, every single one of them is like $600,000, right? So the issue ultimately comes down to the fact that um, they're forcing us towards electricity. That's what I'm trying to get to because I'm thinking a lot about a lot of things at the same time. They're forcing us towards electricity. You may have heard me complain before about this Governor Hochul. I still don't understand how the hell this woman got in because I want you all to remember, oh, look at this guy. This guy doesn't give a fuck. This guy goes across the line, shooting across there, speeds up in there. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Jesus Christ, these people are out of their fucking minds. And then when an accident happens, they act like they didn't know nothing. Look at this guy. Wait, we're going to get right up on him. What's this guy's problem? What is this guy? What is this? What is this guy? You can't went to Binghamton and you drive like that? Look at this guy. You went to Binghamton and you driving like that, buddy? Shit. What the fuck is wrong with these people? So anyway, uh, what was I saying? Um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, uh, so basically they're forcing us into electricity. Hochul was the one who brought this up. And she said she was going to disconnect all of these buildings, the new buildings, going to disconnect them from gas lines. So we weren't going to have gas lines on new buildings. Uh-oh, this guy got 392 over there. So she said she's going to disconnect the buildings off of gas. So we weren't going to have gas on our buildings anymore. Now... Here's the thing. What's funny about that is I already know, and anybody with half a brain understands that if anything happens, like if we were to have a war or something, or if we were to have a power outage, that electric is just not enough. Gas is pretty reliable for the most part. Now, I think back to Hurricane Sandy, and Hurricane Sandy happened in 2012. The problem with Hurricane Sandy was Hurricane Sandy flooded like Lower Manhattan and it flooded New Jersey, right? So what ended up happening was because those the, the, there was no electricity, you could have all the oil and gas you wanted. But the problem was they could not pump the gas or the oil. I made a video about that Hurricane Sandy and I made a video about the long gas lines and it got people got so desperate they were waiting in line with bleach jugs trying to get a gallon of gas. It got really crazy. And I was thinking to myself even back then, man, if I had a Tesla, I wouldn't have to worry about dealing with these gas lines and shit because I, I had full, I had electricity. The problem was where the pumps were for gas and oil, they didn't have electricity, right? So the sad thing about it is no matter how you slice it, all of our entire infrastructure pretty much works on electricity. Now, fast forward to 2022. With this Russian oil sanctioning, we, we used to have all this cheap ass Russian oil coming in here, right? We had 600,000 barrels of fucking Russian oil coming in here like every single day. It was a lot of Russian oil coming in here. So what they did 
was they said, oh, no, no, no. We're going to sanction Russian oil. Now, here's the problem. We've put sanction on just about everybody else. Venezuela has like all the oil on earth under Venezuela. We put sanctions on Venezuela. And I think our stance towards Venezuela was softening simply because when they cut off the cheap Russian oil, what ended up happening is now they tried, Biden tried to go to Saudi Arabia and ask them for more oil. The problem is they said, yeah, fuck all that. We're not pumping no more. But I want to point you back to real quickly in the beginning of 2020, before we went into COVID lockdown, because if you remember, the COVID lockdown started in March 2020, right? If we go back to the beginning of 2020, you might remember, and you could look it up on the internet, Russia and Saudi Arabia had an oil production war. Because they were trying to outproduce each other, the production of oil, the outproduction, that made it so that um, oil prices actually dipped and they went down, right? This government wasn't having that shit. So naturally, we went into COVID lockdown. The price of oil dropped even further. And then as soon as we came out of COVID lockdown, prices of oil and fucking shit shot the fuck up. And uh, by, you know, last year, as you saw, gas prices hit like 5 or $6 a gallon, right? Now, I had already understood years ago that they were determined. They're absolutely determined to get us off of gas and oil. So we already saw the laws that are being passed. They are saying by 2030, these businesses here will not be allowed to sell gas cars. They'll only be allowed to sell electric cars. They said by 2040, these businesses will not be allowed to sell trucks that are gas powered trucks. They'll only be allowed to sell electric trucks. I like the CT6. So we already know what the law says, and we already basically know what's coming, right? So we know what's coming. Gas trucks are going to be a thing of the past. Um, gas cars, they're going to get rid of them. Now, if you really think back, when the government basically puts its, you know, sets its priorities, they, they just get it done. Like, you know, years ago, um, you know, Many years ago, you know, it was all about diesel and it, we didn't have clean burning cars. They got them all off the road. Even when Barack Obama and, and Biden did that cash for clunker shit, they said, yeah, well, we're going to get all these old cars off the road. Any of these old cars will just give out uh, welfare checks and we'll get them subsidized. and We'll get them off the road. So now seventy five hundred dollar tax credits to put you in an electric car, whether the electric car's technology is ready or not. They don't give a shit. They just want it done. They don't care how it gets done. They don't care if they're doing a good job. They just want it done. Then you fast forward. Now they're talking about your oil, your gas, your heat in your house. Now they're talking about your gas stove. Now, the new house that I bought, this place already didn't have a gas connection for the pipes. It didn't have a gas connection. The only heat I had was oil heat, right? So the issue for me was that with just oil heat, uh, during COVID, you probably remember I mentioned this, my oil tank sprung a leak. So I had to take $5,000 and I had to buy a new fucking oil tank. I would have changed during the conversion. I would have gone from oil to gas. Problem was because of COVID, they said that we can't do the conversion right now because there's nobody able to do it because for some strange reason, all the offices was closed. All of the permit places were closed, obviously, because, you know, COVID. So I just said, OK, fuck it. Instead of me spending twelve thousand dollars and just getting the conversion, I'll just spend five thousand dollars and I'll get the oil tank that I have taken out of my house. I'll get a new oil tank put in. So that basically happened. So now I have a brand new oil tank and I have no desire at all to do the conversion right now. But even if right now I had the ability to do the conversion, my thinking now is I'm not going to do the conversion to gas because it doesn't make sense to do the conversion. I know this lady. She, yeah, I, I put this lady in a video before. Paul Conti. I know this lady. She, she got her car from the same place I'm getting my caddy life from. I want to talk to her. I want to talk to her. Uh-oh. I don't know if I'm going to... She, she, she's driving around with fucking blinders on. She can't see me. But I, I've seen that lady... Like, I talked to her before about her car. And she's like one of the few people I know who has a silver CT6. So I wanted to say hi.
but it looks like I won't be able to because she's riding around in there like Sam Rothstein and she's got like horse blinders on like she only looks straight ahead a lot of people see a lot of people don't look around and shit like they don't pay any attention to the rest of the road they just look straight ahead that's why they get into these crazy ass accidents but anyway um as I was saying um what was I saying um yeah they're forcing us into electric only that's the bottom line they're gonna force us to have electric only so they're saying oh gas and oil stoves the burning of these fossil fuels is giving children asthma uh-huh so you mean to tell me being stuck in traffic like this isn't giving me asthma you mean to tell me that uh you know these kids and 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 them uh uh sitting on tiktok and breathing and like i'm like what do you do like listen everybody i know grew up with gas stoves okay everybody i knew grew up with oil heat in their house for the most part everybody who i knew who grew up like that they're all still alive and they're, 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 oh yeah but the asthma the asthma for the little children the asthma i'm like what just existing in this atmosphere is going to give you all types of problems because everybody's driving fucking cars, which is why they try to get rid of the cars. They're trying to get rid of all the gas and oil. So I'll say it like this. They're going to do what they're going to do, and they're just going to force you to do what they say to do. That's what this comes down to. The sad thing about it is all you people like, oh, yeah, well, I'll never give up my Hemi. I'll never give up my Chevy RST. First of all, driving is not a right. Driving is a privilege, and the mere fact that driving is a privilege, they can force you to not be able to drive what you're driving they can force you into something else and they're already doing it we already see what they're doing so the thing about it is they'll make it harder for you to register your car they'll make it cost a lot to register your car they'll t they'll basically tax you the fuck out of the car that that's what they'll do government is forced government taxes that's what they do they'll tax the shit out of you and they'll tax you out of it what else will they do They'll make it so the stores don't sell certain things anymore. There won't be any gas stoves. There'll be electric stoves. There won't be any uh, oil burning anything. There'll be electric everything. It's coming. It's obvious it's coming. It's just coming. There's nothing you can do about it. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And it's, it's just coming. And there's nothing you can do about it. But this whole bullshit about asthma and shit, it's like, come on, man. How stupid do you think we are? The reason why y'all are doing all this now is because y'all want global control. When you go electric, now, all, mind you, all my appliances are already electric. So that means that y'all have to make the step that I don't have to make because I already basically made it, but I made it by default because when I moved into the place, it didn't have a gas connection. Most of y'all need gas for only maybe three things. You need gas for your uh, house's heat. You need gas for your dryer. And you need gas for your oven. They want to eliminate those three things. And, and you already see the writing on the wall. They're literally telling you, we're going to take your stove. So the issue now comes, I, all, my, all of my appliances are electric already, right? The only thing I need the oil for is um, heating the house. Now, with electric heat, like these new electric baseboard heaters and everything, chances are I could very well not use oil heat and i could very well start using just electric space heaters and that would be enough to keep my place just warm enough but that's what they want to do they want to these democrats these people who are in office who are passing this shit they want to create scarcity that's what they want to do now i'll tell you how it is in germany right now or how it is in different parts of europe as you know because of this russia versus ukraine war not only did we lose all that cheap Russian gas and oil, but on top of that, obviously they did. So America sabotaged that Nord Stream pipeline. Whoa, look at that, Kuwait. I've never seen an Air Kuwait before, but I only fly Emirates, so you can keep that Air Kuwait. I don't go to, I fly Emirates to Dubai. So anyway, um, as I was saying, um, we, what was I saying? We have already, seeing what they plan on doing because they're literally telling you what they plan on doing they're gonna do it and they're gonna do it right in your face there's nothing you can do i think that might be an emirates a380 i could be wrong because it's a real far distance but i think there's an emirates a380 up there i hope that is i hope it is i love that plane i need that plane to come take me away right now that thing is so slow but i can't really see it too well it looks like yeah look how slow that thing is moving 
That looks like an Emirates A380. Oh my God, that's an Emirates A380. And look, it's like 306. So chances are that's an Emirates A380. Holy oh shit. It's either an Emirates A380 or it's a Boeing 747, but I can't see it too well. It looks like an Emirates A380. Holy shit. I love, this is the one thing about traffic that I love. When I'm in traffic and the Emirates A380 come in, but I could be wrong. I can't really see it that well. I think that's, that's either an Emirates A380 or it's a Boeing 747. Might be a 747. It's four engines and it's just beautiful. I can't see it too well, it's so slow. Look how slow that thing is. Yeah, I think that's a Boeing. Uh, if it's Boeing, I ain't going. Yeah, I don't think that thing has anything written on the book. I don't know. Okay, so anyway, what was I saying? Um, you see, this is how my traffic day goes every single fucking day. It's 40 minutes of this shit. Uh, car spotting, plane spotting, that's what it comes down to. It's boring as fuck. So anyway, um, where was I? So yeah, they're going to they're gonna take your gas stove. They're going to take your electric stove. Well, no, they're going to give you an electric stove. They're going to take your gas stove. They're going to take your gas car. They're going to give you an electric car. And if you don't like it, you're going to be walking. What the fuck is this lady doing out here? What is this lady doing out here? What is she doing? Oh, shit. You're the reason why this traffic is all fucked up? Look at this. Look at this shit. What the f Yo, don't, don't hit me. What the fuck? All right, let's get the hell out of here. Let's get the hell out of here. I can't believe that. Broken down right in the middle of the freaking... You see what I got to deal with? And you wonder why I'm so crazy. So as I was saying, um, take your gas car, take your electric, uh, you're gonna have an electric car, they're gonna take your gas car, and that's and that's it. And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. So um, where was I? Um, well, I'm already halfway there. The only thing I got left to do I'm just going to get my electric Cadillac and get my electric Cadillac, trade this car and get my electric Cadillac, just like this lady right here with the Cadillac CT6. I really like that car, the CT6. Problem that I had was they didn't make the CT6 hybrid. They made it for a couple of years. It was made in China, and I never actually saw a CT6 hybrid. But I took my uh, mom to uh, check that car out during the uh, PGA Tour. And we went to Cadillac's PGA Tour event. I made a video about that. And I got into a fully loaded CT6. And I loved that car. Like, that car had the self-driving. That car had, look at these cops. Look at these cops. These cops. Real stories of the highway patrol. So anyway. Um, what was I saying? Um, yes. Um, I'm getting my electric Cadillac. And what I may try to do is I may try to outfit most of the rooms in my house if not all of them, with electric space heaters. And I'll try to cut back on oil use altogether. And I'll just use enough energy to keep the house warm. And I'll only reserve the oil heat for when the temperature drops significantly. Now, the first thing people say is, oh yeah, but your electricity bill's gonna go up. And I'm like, yeah, I know my electricity bill's gonna go up, but you gotta understand, gas and oil are so fucking overpriced now until electricity for the most part isn't catching up anytime soon because we we don't have a shortage of electricity we they've created a shortage of gas and freaking oil and natural gas heating and stuff but we don't have a shortage on electricity right now she, oh this lady ain't fucking around this lady drives like a champion she doesn't give a fuck about these lines so anyway um yeah that's what it is. So my thing is, I'm going to probably end up this year, I'm going to push my house mostly towards electric, and I'm going to see what kind of savings I can save, because I know I'm going to save right away on gas, like even right now, I'm, I'm like half a tank right now. So I know I'm going to save money on gas, but I'm going to push like my whole house towards electric in order to cut back on gas and oil, home heating oil. And that's just that. So that's what it is. So that that's what I wanted to talk about, you know, and I, I was deciding, I was like, hmm, should I make 
just a regular video where I just talk about the news article or should I just get my thoughts out while I'm, uh, you know, stuck in fucking traffic? And I figure, you know what? I think I'll do it while I'm stuck in traffic, right? This fucking goddamn Mazda. As soon as he saw that guy pull up. Now, had I not been recording, I probably would have pulled right... I would have I would pulled bus lengths on this chick right here. You know, these people. Pulled bus lengths on her. But, um... Look at this guy. All these fucking Mazdas. See, this is what happens when you go to the car dealership and there's nothing left. It's like, I'm gonna be right up in that butt. Yeah, but uh, that's basically all it is. So, you know, they're gonna force us to do what they tell us to do. There's gonna be some people who are gonna resist. You're not gonna be re able to resist. And then they're gonna, they're gonna make it so you can go to the store. There won't be anything to buy that you wanna buy. And once they get you on electricity, everything will be fully controlled. They'll know when you turn your lights on. They'll know when you turn your lights off. Did you realize that they were using those smart thermostats to literally turn people's heat down when nobody was noticing? They were literally using the smart thermostats. I'll, pull, I'll put the link to the article. And they were doing it when you wouldn't even notice it. And they were turning your freaking heat down. And you didn't even notice they turned your heat down. And they're turning your freaking heat down. And you had no idea about it. Because once they had full control over everything... They could easily decide that, uh, oh yeah, well, you know what? It's too warm in your house. So they could turn your heat down. It's crazy. So my thing is, um, once they go electric, they'll know what time you turn your lights on. They'll know what time they, you turn your lights off. They'll know if you leave your television on. They'll know if you turn your television off. They can turn, they can from the freaking city, they can turn shit in your house on and off. Because some of y'all are so dumb that you went out and got those fucking Alexas and you got those series and shit. You got Siri speakers so somebody can stand outside your house. Siri, open garage door. And then the thing fucking opens garage door and you're like, wait a minute. How's, how'd this person get in my house? Look at this guy. This guy's already got his Tesla. got the got the Challenger and everything. So the thing about it is for us to go electric is going to do the exact same thing that it did when we went digital. They are going to control everything. And once they control everything, you are asked out. You are asked out. It's like if if you miss like one payment. See, I'm not worried about missing payments because I do all my payments online. I pay automatically. But I'm just saying if you miss even one payment, you only have two utilities going to your house by the time they're finished with you. You're going to have water and electricity. So you'll have a water sewer bill and electricity, right? You miss even one payment, everything in your house going off. Everything. You know, because they'll have full control from the office. They'll be able to cut your whole shit off. See, the way it is now, when we have these gas lines going to buildings, every single building has a gas line, a pipe here. Like some states, you don't have it, right? Every single building has a gas main, like right in front of it. And all you got to do is go over there and you have a pipe uh, fitting and you just turn it. And when you turn that pipe fitting, you can cut the gas off to the building, right? They'll be able to do it without ever leaving the office. All they got to do is say, okay, uh, yeah, shut down grid 22 subjunction B. Next thing you know, your shit is off. Your whole fucking place is off because you missed a couple of payments. And that, they're not playing. They're not playing. That that That's what they see. The thing about it is people don't think as far ahead as I do. And I think maybe that's because I watch a hell of a lot of sci-fi movies, but the reality is the sci-fi movies, I've, I, I've yet to see them proven wrong. They literally explained to you what was coming and they saw so far ahead that most people thought it was fanciful, but what they saw was going to be inevitable and it's coming and they're going to cut your goddamn, they're going to cut your gas, heat, you're gonna, not going to have no gas, you're going to have a little ass house like this and you're going to have electric heating. Look at this little, uh, like this house right here, this blue house. You're going to have electric heat, solar panels. That's the other thing. Solar fucking panels. They're going to put solar panels on every by roof. Every by roof going to be a big ass solar farm. And you'll be happy to get those solar panels just because you're going to be, you know, trying to capture enough heat so that you can get not only heat, but you can also get your own electricity. So, you know, but my problem is if you don't have a battery, which our state has laws against the batteries right now. So you couldn't even get the Tesla power wall if you had them solar panels up there. So guess what? You got your solar panels, but if 
the power goes out at night, your power is out at night. But see, the thing about it is, if you had the power wall, if, oh, look at, look at that guy, all of them solar panels. See, the problem is, I don't want solar panels unless you're giving me a battery. Because if I have a battery, if my block's power goes out, my battery will keep my food cold, it'll give me heat in the house, and this, that, and all that. But see, the problem is, if you don't have a battery, then that means as soon as the sun goes down, your power is fucked up. It's gone. There's no power because there's no there's no sunlight to give you the direct current electricity. It's disgusting. So my thing is, I would net like if you plan on buying solar, do not get that shit unless you have a battery that you can connect to your house. But right now, they're, they're saying, oh yeah, well we don't we don't want the battery. This is a law, and they say, oh yeah, well you're not allowed to have the battery right now. I'm like, well what the fuck do I need solar panels for? And then I hang up on the people because they be calling me asking, oh would you like us to put solar panels on either of your houses? I'm like, no, no. It's, it's like why do I need solar panels if I don't have the battery? I want it so that if we have a power outage everybody on the block everybody's power goes off except mine so when you're looking over at my house you you look at your wife you're like hey honey hey honey uh, is the power out and you'd be like yeah honey the power's out oh man what are we gonna do our food's gonna spoil and he'd be like is everybody else's power out down the block and you'd be like uh yeah except for big truck over there his power's on when you look at my house my house is gonna look like dr wiley's castle on fucking mega man and I'm going to have all types of shit running at my house and your power's out and mine's on. That's what I'm talking about. It's like, why the fuck would I want direct current when I could have a battery backup and direct current? Like, it doesn't make sense. So my thing is, I'm not getting no solar panels. I will wait until they give me the battery and then I'll get it. And I'll go 100% electric and I will run my house off the power of the sun. Because, you know, it's like, that's how you got to do it, man. It's like, these people... These people are fucked up. They're literally trying to take your goddamn stove from you. I mean, I never thought we'd get to that. You see this? These are the people trying to give you this oil and gas. And what are they doing? They said, nah, we're going to get rid of this truck. So this truck's not even going to exist eventually. And I know a lot of people want to think that it's going to take longer than it's going to take. But nah, they've got a plan for this shit. They're going to take all your shit away. And they're going to make it so... They're going to make it so that you can't even afford to register your gas car. That's what they're going to do. They're going to make it so registration of a gas car is like $300, but registration of an electric car is like $25. And what would you do? You'd be like, oh, well, I guess I'm just going to have to get that Tesla Model 3 or something. And then you're stuck. You know, that's what they... That These people are devious and nefarious. And they'll do it, too. And they're going to do it. They're doing it now. They're doing it now. It's a damn shame. But, uh, yeah... That's what I wanted to talk about. That's what I wanted to talk about. So, you know, it's not exactly apocalypse driving. It's, it's more like, um, how should I say? It's more like uh, meditation driving, I suppose. I don't know. But, yeah, that's just where we are, man. It's a goddamn mess. Look at this guy with this big truck, the Ford Raptor. Not as big as that T-Rex. That T-Rex eat his ass up. Yeah, but that's what it is, man. That's what it is. It sucks.